Yes, yes, welcome back to the one and only African Diaspora News channel. My name is Richard Sudan. Thank you very much for tuning in. Please, please remember to like and subscribe and spread the word about the channel. Now, we are marking on January the 10th, the 10th anniversary of the death of Kendrick Johnson. Now, just a bit of background for those of you that do not know, many of you will be familiar with this case. Now, Kendrick Johnson was a 17-year-old star athlete at, I think it's Valladosta High School. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm not from the US, but at that high school in Georgia, uh, very close in terms of location, I believe, to Forsyth County, which has been described by many people as one of the most racist and dangerous areas in the United States, known as a sundown town. And Kendrick Johnson was a 17-year-old star athlete at Valladosta High School in Georgia. And he was found on January the 10th, 2013, uh, dead, rolled up and stuffed into a gymnasium uh, mat in the high school. Now, at the time, very quickly, uh, despite uh, many problems actually with the um, crime scene uh, being secured, the death of Kendrick Johnson was quickly ruled as an accidental death. Now, I think the official um, reason that was given, they tried to say that Kendrick Johnson had tried to retrieve some basketball shoes, which apparently students used to leave in the bottom of gym mats um, to secure them as opposed to getting a locker. So the official reason for the death of Kendrick Johnson, who was found literally, I mean literally stuffed into a gymnasium mat, was an accident. And the official um, narrative was that he had climbed in to retrieve his shoes and had suffocated to death, asphyxiation, etc, etc. It's already a familiar tale uh, to many of you. Keep an eye on these sorts of cases. Um, now just to get some official housekeeping out of the way for the YouTube moderators, etc. Um, one of the people or two of the people implicated or potentially implicated or that people thought was implicated was a guy called Brian Bell and also his brother Brandon Bell. Now again to emphasize for official housekeeping purposes uh, Brandon and Brian Bell uh, were officially cleared from the investigation but I say that to say this um, there are many people who kept an eye on this case who do not believe the official version of events. Now, among the rumours, among the thinking of many people looking at this case, the other narrative which people have put forward uh, have suggested that uh, Brian Bell was implicated in the death of Kendrick Johnson and that Kendrick Johnson had, had essentially been beaten uh, by Brian Bell, apparently over a dispute over a girlfriend. Now, interestingly, uh, Brian and Brandon Bell's father was a former FBI agent, uh, retired at the time, I believe. I'll leave that piece of information with you, but walk with me. Now, at the time, the official coroner's report um, apparently corroborated the official version of events, which was that Kendrick Johnson had died from asphyxiation after climbing into the gym mat. Now, sometime later, um, the family essentially exhumed uh, the body of Kendrick uh, Johnson and God only knows the trauma uh, that must have inflicted upon an already traumatized family dealing with the loss of their loved one and their son, their boy. I say boy because Kendrick was 17 years old. He didn't really get to be a man in the full sense of the word. Now, apparently upon um, a second coroner's report after the official first one, um, let me see if I get the wording correctly, but I think there was a ruling along the lines of um, blunt force trauma had caused the death of Kendrick Johnson. Now, this contradicted the official um, initial emerging narrative, which said Kendrick Johnson died from suffocation, asphyxiation or suffocation. I can't remember the exact word, but along those lines. Now, the family again had a uh, second coroner's report done. And that coroner's report um, suggested that Kendrick Johnson had actually died from blunt force trauma, I think, to the neck. Now, as far as I know, there was no real um, 
indication that the case was going to be taken further by the um, local uh, state authorities. Um, but the family of Kendrick Johnson, and we should say at this point, um, solidarity, love and respect to them. I believe they're still pursuing uh, the case. Um, you know, they and many supporters of Kendrick Johnson and his family and people that wanted answers are still 10 years later demanding uh, justice for the death of Kendrick Johnson. They want answers and they do not believe the official version of events. Now, again, to emphasize, I think officially, um, Brian Bell was cleared along with his brother, Brandon Bell. But many people believe that Kendrick Johnson had essentially um, been lured to his death in the gym. A fight had broken out um, in an argument over a girlfriend. Kendrick Johnson was apparently very popular um, in high school. He was a star athlete. I believe he was um, probably destined for big things in that regard. But he was a much-loved young man by his family. And again, just to put this very simply, I say thousands of people, if not more, do not believe the official version of events. Kendrick Johnson climbed into the gym that and had died suffocated and was found the next morning in this gymnasium um, mat. Now, something I want to add at this point is um, the information is available online. But if you take a look at the um, at the manner, the state of Kendrick Johnson's body um, in the aftermath of the incident, the first thing that popped into my uh, mind, the very first thing, it reminded me of the images of Emmett Till. Uh, the young 14-year-old kid who was brutally uh, lynched um, many, many decades ago. And of course, um, the images of Emmett Till's face became well-known around the world because Emmett Till's family very bravely, very bravely decided to give Emmett Till an open casket funeral. And the world could then see just how disfigured Emmett Till had become uh, from the beating and the murder that he had suffered um, before his body was dumped. And when I saw the initial pictures of Kendrick Johnson, that was the first image that popped into my mind, was the image of Emmett Till. And again, we have to be careful on YouTube. Um, despite the official version, many people think, looking at the um, other available information about the circumstances, that things do not add up. Now, of course, along with the demands for further scrutiny of the case, justice for Kendrick Johnson, in my view, we have to then look at the case of Kendrick Johnson in the wider context of the ongoing brutal lynchings of black people in the United States, which has been a um, horrific reality for hundreds of years. Now, again, I use the word alleged very carefully. Um, if we think about the problems within law enforcement in the United States and we think about the um, observation that many people have made regarding the father of Brian Bell, who was a former retired FBI agent, and then we think about the problems within the um, FBI regarding uh, white supremacy within it, there's been about two or three reports actually from the FBI itself since the year 2000 highlighting and warning um, underscoring the dangers of the infiltration of white supremacists within the FBI. There is a very, um, a very dark picture which is being painted. Now, again, um, we might never know um, all of the facts, but what we do know is this. We know that there are many questions still surrounding the death of Kendrick Johnson. We know that the family still want justice. We know um, that if there was foul play involved in this, it would not exactly be the first time that a black person had been murdered or lynched and had been aided in terms of a cover-up with apparatus of the state and law enforcement. Um, if you haven't heard about the case of Kendrick Johnson, I urge you to look into the case of Kendrick Johnson and um, come to your own conclusions about what you think um, about the case. This... Um, case for many people smacks of a cover-up um, and there are many um, examples of questions which have been raised which point towards um, the reasons why people think this was a cover-up. Um, Kendrick Johnson was 17 years old in the prime of life. He would have been about 28 years old um, if he were alive today. And the main sticking point for many people with this case is that the uh, circumstances 
um, in which Kendrick Johnson's body was found. Um, the problems regarding the um, uh, what many people would say the failure to secure the crime scene correctly is another thing which raises many questions for many people. So the, the manner in which Kendrick Johnson and the circumstances around his death, there were problems with uh, the case. Um, and of course, you've got the um, individuals of Brian and Brandon Bell and their father, who was a former um, FBI agent. These are some of the um, factors around people questioning the case and um, some of the motivating factors behind people trying to keep the death of this young man in the spotlight so he is not forgotten and that his death is not in vain and that we can prevent um, further horrific things like this happening in the future. Um, so please do check out the uh, case of the young man Kendrick Johnson um, died in the prime of life. It's the 10 year anniversary of his death on the 10th of January 2023. I'll sign out just by saying um, solidarity always with the family of Kendrick Johnson. Um, we all, I'm sure, wish them every success in their quest uh, to uncover the truth and the real facts as they would see it um, around the death of their uh, beloved boy. So uh, rest in peace to the young man, uh, Kendrick Johnson. You are not forgotten. You will never be forgotten. Um, I'll wrap it up there. This is the African Diaspora News Channel. My name is Richard Sudan. Once again, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Support independent New Black Media. And we will see you next time.